Welcome to Worship at Trinity. We offer a live stream option of our services on Zoom, which can be accessed on the homepage of our website. And our worship services are recorded and available on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and the homepage of our website. Please share these pre-recorded services with others. If you are watching this service online, we hope that you will consider joining us in person. Um, please rise and join me in the call to worship. The earth is the Lord's. Everything in creation belongs to God. Lift up your eyes. See the mighty works of the Lord. This is the Lord's house. All who hope in the Lord will be called children of God. Lift up your hearts. Receive the gracious gifts of the Lord. This is the hour for worship and song. Lift up your voice. Praise the Lord with all your heart. you and say to you welcome back and I hope that you feel as I do so overjoyed to be with you in person it was not so long ago that we were not and so I treasure the ability to see each other this morning 
I'm Pastor Emily and I am um, assigned the task uh, joyfully today of speaking with you about our mission and the mission of our congregation. I'm so passionately devoted to this congregation for one reason. You are a church about God's work and we love to be a mission-focused church. Tomorrow I will be attending once again, and probably even this evening, the United Church of Christ National Conference, which is called General Synod. And the reason I speak about this as a mission is, is one of the best sayings I've heard um, of this congregation is about connection. Kevin reminds us often to be connected in our faith is a part of our call. When we go to Mexico, we are in connection. When we travel across the border, it's a connection in a way um, that many people are afraid to do. By your participation in a congregation in a time like 2021, we affirm that God connected us, that we belong, and we aren't isolated anymore. Truly, we are not isolated anymore. Amen? Amen. Yes. And so um, what I need from us today to be about that work of connection is to quickly pray. And here's the reason why. God initiated um, their planning process for the national setting of the church years ago. They plan long in advance so that thousands of people can gather. And they are a part of us and we are a part of them. As you know, this is the first and it may be the only or it may not. It's an experience like none other but a virtual synod, a virtual national gathering. So will you please join me quickly as we bless them, and let's pray. God, we feel the connection that you grew in us in this congregation. And we trust you, God, because we know you have given us the ability to embrace the Holy Spirit that connects us, that gives us a mission and a faith that has gone across this country and across the world. And so tonight, tomorrow, and the week to come, um, please grow connections so that your mission of being a holy community that loves the world in our nation and beyond it, may those connections be palpable across miles as we sit on Zoom, and may this congregation's love that's expressed through mission know that it is embraced beyond what we can even ask or imagine, even into the very nation of the United Church of Christ and into the world of the United Church of Christ and beyond any wall, any border, any line, any denominational line. We are embracing that God now, and we know that you will go with us. Amen. This morning's scripture is from the book of Amos. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I am setting a plumb line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed, and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword, I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you in the very heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all his words, for this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile, away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer, go back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy any more at Bethel, because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I was a shepherd, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Well, first of all, I want to ask, does anyone know where that plumb line came from? 
Does anybody have a guess? It was one of Ed Shirk's plumb lines, that's for sure. Every, everybody was getting one of those, and uh, I mentioned to Claude Grindstaff, I said, I didn't get one of those, and so Claude brought me one one day. So uh, that's a plumb line. You can take a look at it uh, if you want later. Uh, it was uh, a uh, important builder in town, actually, and uh, a reminder of how, how, uh, what effect one person can have on the world. Glenn Royer compared himself to the prophet Amos. He believed in justice. He advocated for justice. And he also grew up on a tree farm in Canton. And his father very tenderly, tenderly raised trees. And Glenn used, learned a lot from that. Glenn loved plants. And you may even have a garden in your yard that he started because he would go around everywhere and help people with their gardens. Glenn also was a bomber pilot in the Pacific Theater in World War II. He was one of the people who firebombed Japan before the atomic bomb was dropped. He tried to forget those memories. He went to work, worked for a factory where he met his wife, but something else was, was eating at him. He knew that he wanted to do something of significance, something that would make a difference in the world, a place where there would be no more war, a place where young men like himself didn't get sent off. So he heard the call and he went. He was a vine dresser. He was a person that trimmed trees. So maybe we have a little bit better reflection on Amos. God told him to go, so he went. He was just a dresser of sycamore trees. In the way that the Bible tries to speak to us, Amos was anyone. And Amos was everyone. He heard the call and he went. I heard recently that we ought to embrace the word authority. Because the word authority really comes as an as a, uh, extension of the word author. And that we are all authors of our own lives. And no matter how badly our stories might begin in the first few chapters, we always have the authority to be the author of our own lives. We decide when to speak up and we decide when to stay silent. We decide when to stay and when to go. We decide to support things and to oppose things. And prophets who hear the call always struggle with these issues of faithfulness. To go and to speak is dangerous business, especially for Amos, where the authorities are concerned. Because he's trying to change the storyline of a nation. This is a vision. And I always wonder about the visions of the Bible. Last week, it must be that the lectionary is going through visionaries or something. Because last week we had Paul. And for those of you who remember that, it came from 2 Corinthians 12. And it was his recounting of a time when he was carried up into heaven. And he saw things that he was not allowed to tell when he came back. Now, I'm always fascinated by those stories. I think you probably, probably are too. I listen very carefully. Sometimes I ask people, what kind of visions have you had? And so this is about the nature of prophetic visions. Those prophetic visions are usually not for us as individuals, but they're intended to help all the people. That's what Native American spirituality was all about. If there was a problem in the tribe, if there was a problem in their community, they would have some of their leaders go on a vision quest, a vision quest for justice at a time when their people were in need. We were kind of on that vision quest, right, during the pandemic. We certainly were praying for a vaccine. We were praying for a new day. And now we're praying that people get the vaccine. And that the world will turn itself around, but yet we worry about the future because of all the variants that are happening. 
And we know that it won't end until humanity comes to work together and to deal with their problems. You can't have someone in the same boat with you drilling a hole in the bottom of the boat. We're all in the same boat. The Old Testament clearly says in Proverbs, without vision, people perish. It's so important for us to keep in mind that we do have authority and we can right the boat. Even newborn babies know that they have authority and great power. And the Star family is finding this out. <laughs> Phil Star. What do you see, Amos? Jeremiah, what do you see? Jesus said, tell John what you see. He said, for it's for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And that is you. What do you see? Now, a plumb line, it's not some kind of paranormal thing. It's real life. It's a powerful symbol. And in the plumb line, Amos captured the realities of his day. An image from the vision that captured the situation that he was witnessing with an increasing number of people living in poverty. What do you read in the paper that moves your spirit? What kind of things do you share on Facebook? Sometimes we hide the most important issues in our life and we don't talk about them. And for so long we were afraid to talk about racism. Sometimes we're afraid to talk about poverty because there might be people who think that they deserve it. Sometimes we have to have the authority to talk about inequality. Sometimes we have to talk about our illnesses. And sometimes that's uncomfortable for us in a society when our lives are supposed to be okay. So in chapter 8, Amos says, We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances. See, he's going with all the tools now. He's also got the balances being unjust. And Amos comes onto the scene in, in Israel and he says, I know I'm just a dresser of fig trees. I grew up in Canton, Ohio, after all. And I don't have an educated perspective on all these things that happen in the government, but in my life, what I see is that if you want to have a proper house, you use a plumb line. And if you want to have a well-functioning society, you have to have civility. And you have to care for all people. Now, most people can see with their own eyes what's happening. And they can see it when you point to it. But there's also an awful lot of willful myopia in the world that avoids difficult tasks. The cosmos follows certain rules. Gravity pulls a plumb line straight down. The universe exists because of certain principles that hold all that thing together. The use of objective measures was a huge leap for humanity. Think about how slow that progress was through all those hundreds of ages when all the houses were always the same and there was no progress and you would just look back because that's what all your ancestors did. But not so in the time we're living in. We're living in a time when technology has taken over. When technology guarantees that the future is going to be different. But a plumb line works throughout the natural order of the universe, both physically and spiritually. Plumb line's level. You can't argue with it. It reminds us about how deceptive our senses can be, too. And our interests, our special interests sometimes, are damaged. Because we don't want to believe that our house has a crack in it. We also remember how much we need other people to point things like this out to us, using tools for judging some of the things that matter most. And we've been very fortunate throughout history that that person steps forward and says, wait a minute, look, even social issues can be research-based and evidence-based. And even then, many people don't heed the warning signs. 
Look at what happened in the pandemic. Look at what's happening with, with housing across America today. And to the ancient mind, these measuring tools took on a magical quality. Reading and writing was once considered to be magical. They couldn't imagine how someone could take a stone in one place, scratch on it, and a person in another place could read what was on that stone. That was magic. Sometimes we still believe in magic. A couple of years ago, I saw a woman reading a Bible at the breakfast. And so I'm always curious about what people think about those things. And I said, what are you reading? I think that's in the scripture too, isn't it? Somebody runs up. Uh, Philip, I think it is, runs up. Says, what are you reading? And she said, well, I want to read the book of Revelation so I can understand what's happening in our world. Now, we might get some good things out of the Bible. Then we might learn some things, but we also have to know how to use the tool. And the tool is that Jesus is always the measure of the Word of God. So for those of you who uh, know about the, four go the three Gospels that are very similar to one another, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, someone sent me a cartoon recently, and it's a, a, a teacher in a classroom, and all these kids are sitting in the classroom. And the caption says, Matthew, Mark, Luke... You need to see me after class because your book reports are surprisingly similar. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> it's a word, you know. It's the life of Jesus. It's a red letter Christian. If you look in a Bible that's got red letters in it, the words of Jesus. And my advice is that you look into everything. That you look into these people who are doing social statistics so that you see and you can engage with people in honest discussion about the things that matter most. But you also need to engage in the gospel. And that is the word of God that came into the world and everything else that you read is viewed by that light. We take the themes of the Bible seriously. There's a great book by a guy named Walter Wink, and it's got a great title. Two words, Just Jesus. Jesus is the plumb line that enables people of faith to build a solid foundation. I want to uh, remind you of the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. Great statement, but we probably don't use it enough in worship, and I'm making a, a, a promise to include it more often because it gives a lot of guidance. God calls us into the church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be servants in the service of the whole human family, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and to resist the powers of evil. That's Amos. Sounds like Amos. Did you know that the executive director of the ACLU in Ohio went directly to that position from our United Church of Christ national offices where he worked on these very same issues of justice and equality. I'm going to post a video of Reverend Ben Guess. And in that video, he says this. I think McDonald's has it right. You never hear McDonald's say how many employees they have, how many franchises they own, what their budget is. They continually upgrade and update their facilities, their color schemes, their menus for the people they serve. And how do they describe themselves? Billions and billions served. What if that was our logo, our tagline? The masthead on our stationery, the mission statement on every board agenda, the passion of every member. When they talk about their church, they say billions and billions served. Think of the lives touched here that touched other lives. My church, well, really God's church is a light to others. Salt to the world's bitterness. Leaven and raising up a new spirit. Think about that. Billions and billions served. 
That was the end of his quote. I'll try to get that video up on uh, something on Facebook so you can actually see him and see him saying it when he was an executive at the national office. Billions and billions served. What if we measured our nation, our churches, our faith, our lives by how many people's lives we have transformed? And at the end of life, we honor people not about how they profited in this life, but by how they served in this life. And the enduring difference that they made in the lives of other people. Remember the plumb line. Jesus says, what we give is far more important than what we receive. Now, think about your plumb line. What standard do you measure with when you're making a decision, when you're looking out at how your life might be different? It's a lot of possibilities. We have 12 steps, 7 habits, 10 commandments, the golden rule, but we only have one life. I'm wearing my stole today because I like it but also because it has the theme of our, our 200th anniversary on it, which was, was it two years ago now, <laughs> something like that? God is still speaking. We are still serving. All the agencies, they give a rundown about how many people they served. I got a flyer the other day from an agency and they put how many pieces of mail they opened up. We don't count those things. 195 is a big total. Buildings and pastors and people, but sometimes mission gets left out of the church history. Sometimes we don't measure the right things, the impact of a church, the significance of a church. And an example, and just a slice of our influence, I rounded down to 320 College of Worcester students who either went to Mexico with us or worked in our breakfast program. 320. Can we quantify the inspiration they found there? The things they learned, the measures they saw, the hope they saw, the practice of compassion, the influence that they have when they get out into their own careers and understand these things? I always think the one thing that we have to practice today in our world, and we see it all over the place, is we need to practice civility. And we need to teach people civility again. Now we can't turn in a bill for the most important things in life, for the things that create a better world. We tend not to measure the spiritual things in our life. We tend not to even see them sometimes. But Amos saw a plumb line. And he knew what was going on. He could see it in the street. He could see it in the trees. Probably had certain people couldn't buy his apples anymore. It was a symbol of spiritual measurement. And behind every social statistic is a spiritual reality. God does us the same thing as Amos and Paul and Jesus and Jeremiah and Glenn Royer. What do you see? There's a great line. I like, that. I like that line. What do you see? What do you see, Amos? That'll be a thing someday, right? That's going to be on Facebook. That'll be a meme on Facebook. So share it. If I put that up, share it. Okay. What do you see? Mahalia Jackson was sitting behind Martin Luther King in, in Washington when he gave the I'd Have a Dream speech, and she'd gone around a lot with him, and so she knew all of his sermons, right? Uh, and uh, so uh, she felt that uh, King was kind of uh, not, not using his moment in the spotlight well. And so she cried out from behind him, tell him about the dream, Martin. We live out of our dreams. Without a vision, people perish. And today we tell each other, tell them about your dream. You are authorized. You are the author of the future. And God needs someone to open their eyes and to look. And as Jesus said, to have eyes to see and ears to hear. It's about a community of people who have an eye and an ear for what God is doing in the world. Like Ben Guess. And I hope that this scripture today makes you wonder about the ways that God is still speaking to you. The promise is that all of you will dream dreams and you will have visions. Not your private dreams, 
A person has not begun to live until they rise above the narrow confines of their own personal concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. And we lift up Jesus, just like Walter Wink. The one whom we can point to and say, you know what, God is like that. That's the kind of person that God favors, that God lifts up. So as Jesus is a cornerstone, what if you measured your faith, your church, your nation, your life, by how many people were transformed? Amen. Almighty God, we pray that you might lift us up to visions and to dreams and help us to have eyes to see those who are in need in the world today. Help us to think about uh, the uh, wonders and the, the uh, glory of uh, community and especially as caring community is contagious and stretches out to others. We thank you for those people who have been such an important part in the life of our congregation. Today, especially, we, uh, we think about Glenn Royer, and uh, we think about Ed Shirk, and uh, all those people who've left a, a mark on our hearts. Uh, be with us today as we realize this is our community of faith, and these are the people who teach us wonderful things about your spirit and how to live in the world faithfully. We pray today for all those who are ill and those who have been mentioned and, and those who have been lifted up silently from the people who are gathered here today. Help us to raise up to you Aidan Varno and Andy Seaman and Mandy White and Doris Sig. And we pray for your healing power in their life. We thank you for the people who are watching over them and befriending them, for their family members also who uh, are concerned about their well-being. And we pray that you might help them to be in a place of your grace and peace. We're grateful today for our friends among us who are celebrating special occasions. Bill and Roy and Donna and Jan and Anna. And we ask that you bless them in every way as they are the authors of their own lives and as they go forth into the world to, to do good things for others. Be with them in a special way in their joy and their celebration. Today we lift up to you especially Tom Monleone. We pray for your guidance and your protection over him uh, tomorrow in his procedure and a path to health and a solution to the problem. Be with us today as we worry about our world, as we think about those in places far from here uh, who are uh, unvaccinated, who have no hope of being vaccinated. And we pray that you might be with us, that this pandemic might bring us together in the world, that we might see things differently and understand how connected we are to one another because of it. Be with us today as we look ahead to the future and pray for a new day. We remember that when your son was among us, he came and brought us many good tools to use in our life, and we dedicate ourselves to that work. We ask that you might be with us in the life of our nation and help us to live in peace and prosperity. We ask that you watch over each one of us and give us the strength and the will to do your will. We remember that when your son was among us, he came as our light. And he told us that any time we gather together to pray, we should always say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
When we leave this place today, we take with us one of the best uh, things we have in life, which is a mission, a call, and a purpose. May the vision that Amos saw, that justice rolling down like waters, righteousness like a mighty stream, take that vision and remember the plumb line. May this church be our plumb line. Go now in peace. Amen. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. serve the Lord.